Welcome to the Assist Podcast. If this is your first episode, I'm your host, Zach Schwartz. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I am a student at the University of Central Florida. I was originally born in Michigan, which explains my love for Detroit's mediocre sports teams. I'm also a big fan of Barcelona and also a giant superhero fan. And for that today, uh, I am joined by one of my good friends who is the professor of real science in movies or the ruiner of movies because of that, depending on your perspective, and a grade A superhero fan, Thorne Bartleball. Thorne, how are you? Oh, that's Dr. Thorne to you, but I'm I'm great. <laughs> it's, it's, good, it's good to have you on. Uh, it's good to have you on the talk. We're going to talk a lot of uh, DC movie business today. Um, there's been a lot of news this past week uh, about their future, and uh, you and I are pretty confused at the direction uh, that Warner Brothers is going, so uh, that's a little <laughs> tease for the rest of the episode. Uh, but first, tell the masses that are listening to this episode a little bit about yourself. All right, so I'm uh, currently attending Lorain County Community College, working towards a solar technology degree. I'm uh, currently living in beautiful Ohio, the frozen tundra as it is at the moment. The land of polar vortex. The land of polar vo- vortex. That is that is the right word, I would say. <laughs> I heard it was supposed to be 50 on Monday or something along those lines. So, <laughs> Wasn't it just negative two degrees there? Uh, probably probably a lot, a lot uh, colder than that, but yeah, somewhere <laughs> around that. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's, that is truly, truly insane. Uh, so probably the biggest news that came out this week, at least for us, um, for in, regarding DC Comics, was that the uh, rumors about Ben Affleck being Batman, not being Batman, is finally out as Batman, at least in the uh, movie The Batman that is coming out, uh, scheduled for release in 2021 or so. Um, you sent me this tweet. You broke this news to me. Uh, what, what, what do you make of this? Because I personally... I think DC's done a lot wrong, and we'll get into that a little bit, uh, the intro into this. Uh, but I liked Ben Affleck as Batman. I thought he was good, if not narratively, had some issues. Yeah, from what I saw, he definitely, like, I got the vibe of Batman from him playing the character. Um, but I think in terms of them doing the wrong things with the franchise, I think it would be sort of a good way to soft reboot if you know what I mean. Um, especially if we're talking about maybe if they take the whole multiverse approach, then we can go about uh, setting up different actors uh, playing different characters and it would make sense in the end. Right. That's kind of my feelings about that. Um, right. So I, I would agree with you on that. It just doesn't seem like that's the direction they want to go with, or maybe it is because it's... Um, they kind of seemed to launch this DCEU after they realized, oh, crap, uh, Marvel's churning in billions of dollars per movie, and they're like, we need to catch up now. And I think that was a very poor strategy for a couple of reasons. And one thing that I wanted to bring up, and I knew I wanted to bring up when we were talking about this, is that if you compare Marvel 10 years ago, so before Iron Man, and you compare Warner Brothers or DC, whatever the the technical studio term is, now, there's one thing that I don't think people talk about a lot, and it's that Marvel wasn't necessarily doing great. And one of the big issues they had was that they sold off a lot of their major characters. They didn't have the movie rights to Spider-Man. Sony had those and made a great trilogy with Sam Raimi during the early 2000s. They didn't have the X-Men and Fox... Uh, did a great series with them and it's still going on. I'd say it's a very successful series with the X-Men and Fox also has the Fantastic Four, which they have all uh, (laughs) royally messed up. But my point is that a lot of the uh, grade A Marvel heroes, they didn't have, they didn't have the rights to. So in reality, they took what chips they had, which was Iron Man, Hulk, and even the Hulk movie didn't work out at first. People don't remember that either, that there is a Hulk movie that didn't really, wasn't great. Uh, Iron Man was great. Uh, that bet paid off. Thor paid off. Captain America paid off. 
and the other people, Black Widow, obviously, and then they were able to build out from there. And now it sounds like, as we know, with Disney becoming so big that they seem like they're going to buy their characters back. DC didn't have this problem. DC had all of their characters. There's not a single major DC character that they don't own the rights to. So my issue is that Marvel pushed all their chips in on Iron Man, and if it didn't work, oh well, because he's not a grade A character. DC has all of their characters. They could have sat there, and I think you can argue with me on this, but in a lot of ways, I'm a great Marvel fan. I think DC has better characters. Overall, I think DC has more characters. I love Iron Man. If you do Batman right, is Batman a more compelling character than Iron Man? Probably. Mm -hmm. Is The Flash way more developed than Quicksilver? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Is Superman a great leader of the team and symbolizing the American justice way? Yes. And you keep going on and on. And they nailed a couple characters. Aquaman. We both saw that. Great movie. Mm, I agree. (laughs) Made over a billion dollars. Uh, Jason Momoa, great actor. Wonder Woman uh, went culturally big. So my biggest thing, and you can expand on this, is I don't get why DC felt so rushed. Because it seemed like a lot of stuff they did, they rushed. They underdeveloped characters. They put Batman into like 10 years into his career. Which, I mean, you put Batman 10 years into his career, you just wasted five movies, two years spread apart, that would make at least a billion dollars and be great of Batman. And I I just, I really don't understand the strategy here. So I I guess what I'm leading to is to ask you, would you have strictly followed the Marvel format in that, okay, we're going to give these four superheroes their origin films Then we'll build on this movie while introducing a couple more smaller characters and go from there. Or would you have done something a little bit different, just not whatever the hell this DC universe is? Because it sucks, and I hate it. Yeah, I mean, Marvel's uh, whole process turned out great for them. Um, I think if DC, like, copied it, it would almost turn out to some people to be like, oh, you're just copying what they did. So I I think it should be like a mix. You know, you do your... um, you know your origin stories i mean maybe maybe they because they seem to make a lot more um quality like standalone films yes so if they just did mostly that with the occasional uh crossover film not even have to have all the characters you know so maybe just you know superman and wonder woman in one movie say instead of having the whole entire group or just one and they could you know do a lot more uh personalized stories i would say instead of bigger picture maybe um but yeah what you said about batman 10 years into his career that is that 10 years is is all your backstory all your uh how you grow to care about the character how you see him uh get to that point without that you you have okay that's batman and that's it like what kind of batman do we have here and you don't you don't really get the context. They they tried to just throw you into a world and just tell you, um, this is, yeah, you should know this. And any any company that does that is just they just they they kind of disrespect their fans, you know, because they're they, like Marvel's characters are different from their comic book characters in small ways, and that's important. Yes, build up in a standalone film, and without that uh, distinction, you don't know who you're dealing with anymore. Right, there has to be a little bit of origin, no matter what character it is or how well you think um, the audience knows, because, let's be honest, a lot of times when movie audiences uh, come in, they're not like you and I, where we're kind of scouring every trailer, we're scouring Reddit, trying to figure out uh, what's going to happen, that they just walk in and want to see a movie, and they don't know any prior information. Right. So, yeah. yeah, so I think your point about the dive straight in is important because the thing Marvel did was they – Iron Man came out in 2008, and then they laid the groundwork for three, four years till the Avengers came out, and then they kept on building. And in reality, as we are seeing right now, and obviously we'll talk about Endgame in the future and all this stuff, that they've been doing this for 11 years. They had 
relatively to some changes and obviously some tweaks to movies and stuff like that, uh, they've had this general outline for 11 years. Um, and the issue is, if you're going to build a universe like DC tried, um, and I say tried, I mean they're still doing it, but to trying to build a universe, you have to have that kind of foresight and plan. And it seemed like DC didn't do that, and I think it, it shows. And to your point... I think a lot of DC's characters do work on their own. I think Green Lantern works on his own little thing. Uh, the movie with Ryan Reynolds didn't, but I think if you do the movie <laughs> then correctly, uh, it could. You've seen the success of Deadpool kind of being on his own. Yeah, it touches on the other X-Men characters, but like you said, it's uh, some self-contained films with characters work more. And as we also see with DC, it, it's kind of funny because... In a way, the only thing that's not working for them right now is their movies. Uh, their animated movies right now are doing brilliantly. They've done almost oh, yeah. every major storyline out there. And um, I was just looking at it. I haven't seen any of them. But I think they, they seem to receive critical re- reviews as well. As you know, I'm a big fan of Arrow, which is a DC property and connects with now Arrow, um, the show The Flash, uh, there's a Legends of Tomorrow show that took characters from those two shows combined and did that. There's Supergirl now, which has mm-hmm. Superman on it. There's uh, Black Lightning now, which is kind of another uh, side story. And all those shows seem to be doing pretty well um, from that. And along with restrictions from Warner Brothers, i.e. they went to Gotham and Batman had already disappeared. That kind of thing. Um, yeah. There's some... and. Uh, I was watching the Arrow episode a couple weeks ago, and it was pretty clear they were doing the Suicide Squad storyline again, and they were not allowed to use the word Suicide Squad, because (laughs) as we'll talk about, Suicide Squad um, sequels coming out soon. So it's with restrictions as well, and also their video games, Injustice, the Injustice series, is brilliant. Uh, It works really well. So it just seems like they drop the ball on this universe and we can talk about the future, but it, uh, coming up, but it just, it, the fact that they've kind of dove right in and now they're sitting in it, sitting in here and there's maybe been what half of the movies are hits. I think yeah. Aquaman and wonder woman, uh, did both critically well, socially well and, um, fan like, uh, or money. Well, sorry, uh, box office. Well, uh, I think those are the only two that have accomplished all three of those. A lot of people had issues with Batman versus Superman. Justice League was a complete, complete, <laughs> colossal, um, underdeveloped failure. And uh, Man of Steel, people are kind of like, what the heck? Uh, so I, I, I think there was a lot of um, issues with those movies. And now looking forward, I don't know if I trust DC. I, was so, I think you and I are both surprised. At the, some of the narrative decisions Aquaman made because we're like, we're waiting for them to mess it up again and that you can't have that as a company. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I just cannot believe that I can't bring myself to think that it's DC that's making it. So I believe that they're just like, they have this whole script written out, all thought out and Warner brother comes in and is like, no streamline, streamline that to be more like Marvel you know, more um, recognizable by the audience. And it's like, don't try to be, don't try to match and copy Marvel. Like do your own thing and you'll get fans that way because they'll appreciate the thought out process of that and something they haven't seen before. And that's what you're supposed to be doing, you know? Right. And I would also add just in basis, DC's darker than Marvel. The characters are darker. Yeah. You know, Superman's whole planet blew up. Uh, Batman and both his parents die, which you want to go to the Tony Stark uh, similarity. Tony built an awesome suit and lived like a billionaire, and Bruce Wayne is underground vigilanteing. Uh, yes. Green Arrow, same kind of thing. The Flash, his parents were killed by his arch nemesis. Um, or his mom was, at least, sorry. Um, and you keep going on and on, it seems to be dark characters. The Joker, uh, probably the most famous villain of all time. I mean, they even messed up the Joker. Yeah, that was incredible to me. <laughs> I just, I couldn't believe. <laughs> and even, uh, we'll tie this back to something else we're going to talk about. So, Jared Leto Joker, right, in the universe, and this is where your point about the multiverse earlier you are kind of talking about is the fact that they have a universe, they're still releasing movies from the universe, we'll talk about those uh, in the future, I have them listed. 
Uh, but there's a Joker movie that's supposed to come out this year with Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker that's not in the universe, but it's being made and released as a DC movie. So this is this is where, at least when we were you and I were talking about this off air, the confusion really set in for me. Yes. Yes. Um, I was actually talking about this last night. And um, if they want to do the whole time travel thing, they could maybe pull that off if they do it well enough. Because I know Marvel doesn't really have that. So that could be a, if they do it well, uh, it could be a defining thing of the DC universe if they try that. As in like, um, you know, because especially with the, the new um, Batman movie and this new Joker movie, maybe they cross over. And if you do time travel and everything, maybe an event, someone goes back in the past, maybe flash. Cause I know this happens in the comics and yeah, flash so point. he messes something up. Yeah. Flashpoint. That's what it was. If he messes something up there and then the whole process of that uh, event happens. And maybe by the time he tries to figure everything out, he comes back and the only things that are changed are some of the actors. So it could be believable that way, you know, if they want to do it that way, if they do it right. I mean, there's tons of ways you can mess that up. Um, right. I mean, so it's an option. It, right. So it's like, do we trust them to pull it off? But maybe they have been uh, failing so often that they finally kind of understand. And maybe that's what we need, unfortunately. So we can get into the future a little bit here. The Flash movie that you are referencing where they could reset it, and I've seen rumors about that. It's not scheduled to release until 2021, so we might have to sit right. through two more years of this crap, which those two <laughs> years will include Shazam, which comes out April 5th. Uh, Zachary Levi is starring as adult Shazam, um, which is interesting. I, I think we, I saw the trailer. Uh, it's a m- much more lighter movie, which makes sense because the superhero is 14 or 13 or so. He's, he's a kid, so yeah. I can, I can get that. Uh, and there's magic involved in there. And, uh, another interesting side note is that the rock, the rock himself, who seems to be everywhere and, uh, anywhere, it has been confirmed to play Black Adam for years, which is Shazam's direct rival. So who knows? Maybe we see that. Uh, Birds of Prey coming earlier 2020. That was just teased this week as well with Margot Robbie reprising the role of Har- Harley Quinn. And I think um, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn was a win. I think that was that, that, yes. that, that's that's a dub. Um, and so that I looked up the synopsis because like what the what, what is going to be in this movie and they talk about Batman disappearing, so tie it back to Aflac leaving. It seems like they're already kind of preparing for that narratively. Because, uh, of course, they always try to fit in these behind-the-scenes things into the narrative, so it still makes sense. Uh, Harley Quinn has left the Joker. Um, uh, Black Mask is in it, which I've heard is a pretty uh, frequent Gotham man. And Black Canary and Huntress are supposed to appear. So that seems like it could work stylistically. Um, and of course, as we're about to see with Captain Marvel coming out, that now uh, it's the, the genre is shifting from dominated completely by males to a bit more of a split, although it's not nearly 50-50. Uh, of course, and Wonder Woman 1984 will be out in 2020 as well. And then a Suicide Squad sequel in 2021. So that's the future. Um... Wonder Woman was gr- is great. I think that'll be a good movie. Birds of Prey has potential. Shazam could be fun, but I don't. I don't know. If you ask me right now, what movies will I see in the theater? It could be zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely something you kind of just. I don't know. You wait for reviews or wait for you have more information because it's kind of past that point of. Yeah, I know that character. Let me go see that movie because at this point, it's like, well, chances are that movie's just gonna suck. <laughs> Right, and that's exactly what uh, I know I did, and I think you did too with Aquaman. We're like, oh, people actually enjoy this movie. And then we obviously went out and saw it, and we'll uh, get to that story a little bit down the road. (laughs) So um, I called you the professor of real science in movies. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit of a critic in that way. So let's uh, let, let's hear about a couple of your um, maybe uh, things that you've hated the most or recently in movies. And um, obviously, you and I are both uh, pretty scientifically scientifically oriented. Uh, and a lot of times, even in uh, kind of fun action movies such as an Aquaman or the one that I 
purposely took you to, knowing you would get upset if you remember, was Fast and Furious <laughs> 8. Because I knew, I had already seen it, and I knew there was this one scene in the movie, which uh, we could even talk about during this segment, um, in which you were going to get mad, and surely enough, you did. Uh, so so l- l- let's hear your one minute uh, or so rant about why science should be preserved in movies. I, I don't think it needs to be in like every movie. I, Fast and Furious, like I enjoyed the movie. It's just <laughs> the it's how ridiculous it was that I was just baffled. Like I enjoyed it for being ridiculous, but then I was like at the same time thinking about it. Like no, no, a, a flaming, uh, you know, ball of fire cannot be blocked by a car, and the person behind <laughs> it is totally fine. <laughs> like, it's not how it works. It's like how if like you're shooting a serious action movie. And your main character is hiding behind the door of a car while people are shooting, uh, you know, ARs at it. Yes. Rapid fire. Like, shoot their feet or shoot through the door. That's how it works. You can't just you can't do that. Or how if you jump out a window and you have no scratches whatsoever, like, I think that adds to the whole attitude of the film. Like, if you're going for a dark film, show how all these things can affect someone. And, that, like, they try to at the end of the movie show how beaten up they are from it. How about show like actual scars that developed from the actions and you see them take place. I think that would, it would like those little details like that would help advance the character, like, and your emotional connection to them going throughout that pain. And that's not so much science. It's kind of more just small details of medical, but you know what I mean? And logic and logic. Yeah. It's, (laughs) It's like stop doing these little uh, little tropes that everyone sees through. I I just I, you get I, I, those things get me like I notice them because they happen so often. Or how if someone's uh, trying to bust through a door, it always takes three times to bust through the door. <laughs> you count <laughs> like, in your head, I, you you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like it's gonna take three hits because you got to build up the suspense and then boom, you're in. Like I know how it's gonna happen. I hate that. If you do all those little things, you have more options to go off in a way that I won't expect and I'll enjoy the movie more. So one thing I want to say, you mentioned the guy jumping out of a window with no scratches or anything like that from the glass. Yeah. Have you seen the new Fast and Furious spinoff Hobbs and Shaw trailer that just released? I think it was yesterday. No, I have not. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) in the trailer... Uh, the Rock is one of the spinoff characters. He's Hobbs. And The Rock jumps out of a window and falls at least 200 feet onto this guy. And somehow The Rock landing, obviously, at that velocity now, you're being pulled down by gravity for 200 feet. It did not snap the cord at all. He just jumped on him and was holding them. It was going back and forth or whatever down the cable. And I just I saw that and I was like that would piss off Thor so much, <laughs> and I said you know what we're gonna go see this movie together. So I've just decided we're gonna go see this movie together in August. <laughs> Wait, so they made a Fast and Furious spinoff movie, but the Rock is a character in the Fast and Furious. Is it is a spinoff movie like a different world yeah, or something? Yeah. So you we saw eight together. Um, yes. So you remember? Do you know Jason Statham? By like face, yeah. so it's him and the Rock's characters are off, and it's actually Idris Elba, uh, Heimdall in the um, Marvel universe, and a bunch of other oh. roles. He's the villain, uh, and so they're like, uh, I think the whole premise basically was like, this is the baddest guy. We need two special agents, whatever, and it's uh, they pick Sean Hobbs, and I'm thinking, well, if he's the worst ever, don't you want like Vin Diesel too? Maybe just a thought. Like, he's pretty good at these things, uh, but I guess not. So, yeah, they're doing um, – they're releasing that in August. Then they're doing Fast 9. I think they just started recording Fast 9. Uh, <laughs> and they're getting the – they're going to 10. So uh, they're going to 10 now, I think, because you could have stopped after 7. This is a whole other podcast um, Yeah. because, <laughs> you know, I love these movies. I really think they could have stopped after 7, but once they did 8 without Paul, they have, they're like, okay, we're going to do 10 for Paul. So – I think that's the I think that's the thing. So yeah, those so those are those are still going. That's August second. We'll we'll uh we'll go see that. You can have a I'll give you maybe a ten minute long rant to go through point by point. It'll be like at minute thirty fifty five, the rock absorbs a bullet and nothing happens. <laughs> I'd expect that from the rock. It's a good point. 
Um, Speaking of Statham, just want to bring up the movie uh, The Meg. That oh was, yeah, that one was ridiculous. I don't even want to get into it. I just wanted to. <laughs> it's a whole other. It's a whole other thing. It's a tease. It's a tease for the audience. One of these summer days, we'll just be like, you know, let's talk about the Meg. <laughs> Your face will inflame. <laughs> That's the movie of straight cliche. <laughs> I mean, I, I imagine the, the movie is about a shark. It kind of has to be. Yeah. <laughs> so. They kill the one, and then a bigger shark comes, of course, and they're like, "Well, how did we never notice that before?" <laughs> Oh man, some of these movies that get green light, you're like, wow, <laughs> a five year old could have wrote this. <laughs> and it's like, I know exactly who it was written for, and I know it's going to succeed. I'm just mad that it's going to succeed. <laughs> you're right. You're like, yeah, I'm mad, I'm mad the sequel, The Meg 2, will get announced in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Because that movie did amazing. Did it actually? That's what I heard. I heard the box numbers were really good. Wow. Interesting. I might have to look into that after the show and uh, make sure that's true. That's crazy. I didn't know that. I, I never saw it. Um, so shifting gears again, one thing uh, I wanted to do on uh, the assist now, if you, this is the first episode you're listening to, is kind of have a topic like we just did with DC, some movie stuff, uh, that kind of thing, uh, and also have some fun, engaging games. So <laughs> there's one I picked for you, Thorne, because uh, I think you're going to be great at this, is that uh, I found this website that has unanswerable questions. So you, as my guest, are going to try to answer these questions the best you can for the audience. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. If you have a cold, hot pocket, is it just a pocket? Uh, I see the point of the game. <laughs> Okay. You have an answer? <laughs> I, don't. I don't. The next one. If there is a wheelchair bound comedian, is it still called stand up? I'm sure he would still call it stand up. He would he would go crazy with that. Right, I say that'd be probably the start starting a start of his monologue every time, right? Uh, I mean Kevin Hart talks about how short he is every time he uh he begins. All right, I like that answer. I think this is one of my favorites. Could someone be addicted to counseling? If so, how would you treat them? Drugs? <laughs> I was say, what's the opposite of counseling? Like berating them? <laughs> like if they're addicted to counseling so much, you have to like... Shame them. I guess so. <laughs> That'd be... Wow. Addiction's a monster. We're not making fun of addiction. We swear. <laughs> When does it stop being partly cloudy and start being partly sunny? That's that's a question that I've been asking forever. <laughs> Looking at my weather app, so confused. Like, what do you mean? How do you know? What is, right, because sometimes what is they'll it? do either one. Yeah. Yeah. What what constitutes partly sunny or partly cloudy? What does it mean? <laughs> I hope someone writes in that's like a weatherman that just writes in like, actually, there's a specified range on the weather app that uh, it tells you if you look in the guide and the terms and conditions and all this crap. And I'll be like, the terms and conditions, the the terms and conditions. It's not even like how to use the app. You're going to love this. If pro and con are opposites, wouldn't the opposite of progress be Congress? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I, I've heard that one. I agree. <laughs> the answer is just yes. As we saw, right? The government isn't. Is the government even back yet? Do we know that? Um, is it partially open? I thought I saw something. I else think. There. I think it's open, at least through Super Bowl, and then it's going to close uh, next week. I'm not sure. Wow. Well, we'll have to. I don't know the exact day. We'll have to keep up with that. <laughs> I, I was I was kind of hoping that it would be closed throughout the Super Bowl, just so Trump could see, hey, these people actually matter in the jobs that they do. But yeah. Of course, it wouldn't go well because obvious obvious reasons. <laughs> there is a. Uh, we're taping this before the Super Bowl. It'll come out afterwards. But there's a prop bet for uh, the amount of Donald Trump tweets on February. Was it third? Is tomorrow the third? Yeah, February third. There's a with, a with bet? yeah, like uh, they do a lot of like fun bets for the Super Bowl. So there's one oh. that's like over under. Is John, Donald Trump going to tweet more than oh. six times or less? So uh, and I, I depending on who wins or not. So it's kind of funny that of course it's like what happens oh, if a news story breaks and then he's got to all right. How do you handcuff? Maybe, probably. 
How do you handcuff a one-armed man? <laughs> you attach it to his ankle. I was thinking that. Could you do? You, do they have cuffs that long? Although I guess it depends where you're shopping, right? I mean, you would know. You get those ads on Pandora. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone listened to the trailer for that story because that was that was really good. Uh, <laughs> last one. How does the guy who drives the snowplow get to work? Hope. Faith. <laughs> Praying. <laughs> Praying. God's plan. That's how I drove the day of the blizzard. I prayed. Oh, that's right. I saw that question. I was like, wow, I really don't know. The first thing I thought of was maybe they sleep over. <laughs> it's was... <laughs> was like, wow. Um, so, fans, if you have any answers to those that you uh, think you are smart enough to be read on the show, I will happily accept those because Thorne and I really do not know uh, the email is the assist pod at yahoo.com. So please write in those responses. <laughs> so looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. Yes. We'll have to read them next time you come on. So, and then the last thing we want to end every episode here at the assist, cause it's all about being real. It's all about authenticity here at this excellent company podcast. Uh, and through, Years and years of friendship and um, family ship that doesn't work anyway. Family uh, who so many stories are shared with. Uh, we want to come on and tell a couple of stories. So we couldn't think of one from our childhood, which as we do this again, we will definitely think of some probably right after we finish this. So yes, <laughs> this is the most recent one we have, and I will set the stage by saying uh, I already alluded to it with Aquaman. Um, it was New Year's Day or a couple days before New Year's Day, and I offered that we go see Aquaman together as a double date because we had been meaning to have a double date with both of our girlfriends uh, before I left for school and your girlfriend Avery left. Uh, So I'll set the stage with I invited you there and you declined saying you would be a bit busy and stuff like that. You know, obviously it's after New Year's. I I get it. I got it. Um, And so then I go to the movie at the time I said I would and uh, you can pick this up. Yeah. So, yeah, it was after New Year's. And, I, you know, I originally declined because uh, Avery was like, oh, I'll be I'll, we'll probably be tired, whatever. We will kind of want to spend that day um, just kind of relaxing and not doing much. So I was like, OK, sure. And we did. We were we were we didn't do anything that day. And um, so I'm like, and it was late in the day and uh, I get a, a text from a couple friends and they're like, hey, let's go see Aquaman. And I originally was like, hey, I, I, we're kind of just chilling here. And everybody was like, well, if we really want to go, sure. And then I said, all right. Like, I, then I was like, I should text Zach. Ah, I thought the movie already started. Damn it. That's, that kind of sucks. I feel bad. So we went anyway. <laughs> and <laughs> we were watching the movie. And I'm like, oh, this is a great movie, you know? We get up. The lights turn on. I'm, I stand up, stretch around. I talk to Avery. And then I turn around, and there's Zach's face. <laughs> So can, can, can I pick this up? Because yeah. I'm sitting there, and we the theater was pretty uh, filled when we bought tickets because yeah. it was one where you had to buy your uh, tickets ahead of time and pick your seat. Uh, and I, the lights come on, as you were saying, and we had just gone through the whole movie. And I look over to my left in front of me, a row in front of me, and I say, Katie, is that Thorne? I was like, saw the uh, like upper three-fourths of your face. I'm like, is that Thorne? <laughs> And she looks, she's like, it really looks like it. And so then she just yells, Thorne! And you turn around, and I'm just, you're right, just dead on staring at you. And then Avery turns around like, oh, shit. I mean, I was, I was happy because I, I mean, I felt bad because I'm like, this is going to look like we stood him up and saw a movie without him still. I, know. I can explain, but I was so happy, like, hey, you're here, thank God. Right, because, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we're, we're both adults. We're, we're both kind of just like, yeah, whatever, like, um, yeah. not, not bad at all. And, and so then we ended up going to a Cheesecake Factory afterwards and had a great dinner and caught up. So, of course, whenever we decline to see movies with each other, we always end up watching movies <laughs> together. That is, that is the uh, rule um, for stuff. Like, we watch Infinity War, Civil War, Aquaman, Fast 8, all the big ones. Yes. We obviously see together. Yes, so. end game coming up. That'll be a that'll be a date. <laughs> I'll literally fly home like that Monday, and we'll see it Monday night or something like that, or Tuesday, whatever, from school. I will be back, and we'll see it immediately, <laughs> right off the plane, straight to the movie theater. <laughs> like I was like, Thorne, I'm sorry, I made you wait three days. <laughs> 
How dare you? I have to stay off the internet for three days. Exactly. Yeah, you can't go on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, Reddit would be a, a – that's just spoiler. Spoiler land. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, unless something big happens within the universe, obviously, we'll, uh, we can do – since I run this, we could do emergency – uh, podcast should anything major happen in the next <laughs> month or so, but uh, Captain Marvel releases March 8th with Brie Larson starring as Captain Marvel, Nick Fury coming back, uh, movies set in 1995, the last movie to Endgame like you said, so the ver- so it could be very well next time the assist people will he- hear you will be then, we'll break down Captain Marvel a week or two after, give people some time to see it, we'll break that down, then we'll do- we will do a larger uh, end game thing. And one thing I've been thinking about is that I want to have a couple people on like a, a legit round table for, to break down infinity war again before end game for this kind of uh, thing. Cause I think that'd be really fun. And that movie, that movie deserves to be broken down uh, yeah. for how intense that was. So uh, we'll talk off air about that and we'll, we'll, we'll give the people what they want. Yeah. And I was actually going to bring that up. I, I, I figured what big movies are just event or just whatever events we come up with have a few people on at a time and we all just kind of hang out and chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely get, uh, get a round table going. We'll get Katie on here and whoever else, uh, thinks they're qualified enough to be on here. <laughs> whoever deserves it. They, they can match wits. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. So that was Thorne Bartleball, everyone. Thank you, Thorne, for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me. If you like the episode, go to the show page and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. Drop a five-star rating. That really helps us keep the show going. Maybe even leave a review if you're feeling generous. Send all emails to theassistpod at yahoo.com. Follow our Twitter and Instagram at assist underscore podcast. And tune in next week to listen to the next episodes. Mm